Hello, my name is Ricardo Cadena with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video is about assigning IP addresses to Mediant 3000 TP6310 trunk pack boards using the Audio Codes Boot P server application. In a high availability environment, the M3K chassis houses two TP6310 boards or blades. Each board has its own unique IP address assigned to it that is used for maintenance and initial configuration, as well as for situations preventing HA mode operation. After assigning unique IP addresses to each blade, a global IP address is assigned that is used by the active board for all management, signaling, and media traffic. The global IP address must be different than the IP addresses assigned to each of the blades, and must be assigned from the same subnet. We will demonstrate the assignment of the individual IP addresses to the TP6310 boards using the Audio Codes Boot P server application. The global IP address would be assigned at a later time. That topic is covered separately. The Boot P server application is installed on the services or technician laptop or PC. This laptop or PC will provide the configuration information in response to requests from the TP6310 boards. We assume Boot P has already been installed. In order to prepare for IP address assignment, we will need to configure the application. The basic pieces of information are indicated in the Client Configuration window, accessed by clicking the Edit Clients button. Though there are many options, since we only need to assign an IP address, we will need the MAC address of the board to which the boot P utility will respond, as well as the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway information. For the MAC address information, you must simply note the MAC address from the label on the front of the trunk pack boards. We will note the MAC address for the active TP board in slot 1, and the standby TP board in slot 3. To complete the configuration of the Boot P utility, first select Preferences from the Edit menu. Again, many options are available, but we only need to make sure that the laptop's or PC's network interface that will be connected to the TP board or Ethernet switch is selected. Once confirmed, click OK. In order to configure IP address information that will be provided to the TP6310s, once again click the Edit Clients button. The Client Configuration window appears. The available fields are shown on the right. We will need an entry for each TP board. Click the Add New Client button to add the first board. The configuration begins with the Client MAC field. The checkbox is automatically selected, enabling replies to requests from the specified MAC. Add what was specified on the MAC address label. Next, add a client name. Then the IP, the subnet, and the gateway. The TFTP server IP is automatically populated from the Preferences screen. Click the Apply button. The details appear in the client list. Repeat the procedure for the second board. When the configuration for both boards is complete, 
click OK. The laptop or PC must be connected so it can provide responses to boot P requests sent from the TP boards. If connecting to an Ethernet switch, you will need to make sure that the TP boards and laptop are connected to the same VLAN and that no other boot P or DNS servers can respond to TP board requests. Connected to an Ethernet switch, the boot P server can provide configuration information to both boards sequentially. We will demonstrate an alternate option of separately providing IP address information to the TP boards by connecting a laptop to the TP boards using a crossover cable. To prepare for boot P server configuration, the network cables will first be removed from the active and standby trunk pack boards. We first remove the redundant board's redundant cable, then the active board's redundant cable. Next we remove the redundant board's primary cable, then the active board's primary cable. Make sure that the redundant power supply is not connected so that the gateway may be completely reset by disconnecting the cable from the primary power supply. With the BootP server application configured and open on the laptop that will be used to provide configuration information to the gateway, connect a crossover cable to one of the network ports of the primary TP board. At this point, the power may be removed. After waiting up to a few seconds, reconnect power to the gateway. Watch the BootP server application window to confirm when the IP address information has been provided to the trunk pack. If you do not see the board request configuration information within 15 to 20 seconds, you should reset the gateway again. Once confirmed that the trunk pack has requested and received configuration details, you will need to disconnect the crossover cable from the active board's rear transition module and connect to the redundant RTM. Once connected to the standby board, physically reset the gateway again. With the slot 1 board having already successfully requested and received its network configuration information, the slot 3 board should send its boot P request within 10 to 20 seconds. However, if it does not, reset the gateway again. You see the slot 3 board request in the boot P application. With both boards having configured their network settings based on what was received via boot P, you may now reconnect all power supply and network cables. Once the gateway has completed booting, you will be able to ping as well as connect to the gateway using the slot 1 TP board IP address. For an HA configuration, the global IP address must now be assigned using the management interface used in the environment, either web browser or EMS client. As a quick confirmation in this demonstration, we prove this by using a web browser. Note that high availability is not operational since the global IP is not defined. Please reference additional Avaya Mentor videos, Avaya Knowledge Base articles, and Avaya Support product documentation for instructions on assigning the global IP address. For additional information on IP address assignment, reference the Median 3000 SIP installation manual. Media Gateway documentation is contained on the Median 3000 software and documentation disk or in the ISO available for download from plds.avaya.com. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. 
For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.